I went from making $800 the month that I was part-time to $3,800 my first month full-time. What's up, Makepop Music? Austin here again, and I have kind of a cool video today. It's gonna to be a little bit different, more like a story time type video, just a little bit of a heart to heart. I'm basically gonna give my story of how I went from just being like a hobbyist, how I even got into music production, just my full story and transition into becoming a full-time producer, and then just kind of like where I've expanded on after that. So let's get started. A couple caveats that I should probably make known first are this is not the right way to do it. This is also not the wrong way to do it. Uh, there's thousands of ways to, you know, make a living doing audio. There's, you know, going to a school, doing internships, starting your own business, getting stuff passed down to you from other audio companies. There's honestly a billion ways to do it. This is just my story. It's kind of what's been working for me. It's kind of the plans that I have to grow as a producer in the future. So if you want to, you know, listen to this and take any tips from it, awesome. If you don't, I completely understand this video is probably not for you. But for those of you that do just kind of want to hear my story and, you know, where I came from, how I did it, what I'm doing right now to kind of propel myself to the next level, stick around because you might have some uh, good nuggets of information around. All right, so the first thing we have to do is we need to go all the way back to the start. I was in a metal band. I was like 17 years old, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. Uh, we were honestly, we were pretty solid. We, you know, were doing really well in our local area. We were recording albums, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, we were just wanting to write a lot of music and it was getting expensive for, you know, five or six, 17 year old kids to go in and out of the studio all the time. So I just wanted a way to kind of like start making demos so we could kind of narrow down our songs. So I downloaded Mixcraft. I think I paid like 60 bucks for it or something like that at the time. Downloaded it onto my laptop. Um, and it started off super, super janky, like downloading free drum sample one shots that I found on like freesound.org and then, uh, you know, like lining in my Line 6 Spider amp into my computer trying to like record guitar. And honestly, it was cringy, but it like helped us get our ideas down and it kind of helped me learn, you know, the very, very, very basics of a DAW. So I started doing all of this in like middle 2012. Honestly, it was more of just like a means of like, it was kind of convenient for our band to, you know, go stay at somebody's house you know, one of the band members, stay up till four in the morning, pound a couple monsters and like write a couple demos out, even though they sounded like complete dog shit um, and nobody would ever hear them. It really just kind of helped me like understand what was going on. So I started doing those demos for ourselves for a little while. Nobody heard them. Uh, nobody cared. We just had them for ourselves. Finally, I started getting kind of good at them to where, you know, I would post clips on SoundCloud, I would post clips on Facebook groups like the Cameron Mizell forum. Uh, shout out to that OG forum. My whole start is because of that place, uh, so shout out to everybody that runs that, shout out to Cam and Sean. So I was basically just posting all of these little demos and clips, and honestly looking back they're not good at all. Like the mixes were rough, sounds were crazy cringy, um, but I was getting better and better and better and better. We got to a point to where I was starting to get uh, as good or better than the people that a lot of the local bands were recording with. So at this point I had already moved from Pensacola, which is where my band was, where I went to high school. I'd already moved down to South Florida where my wife and I went to college. I was still doing these demos on my own. I wasn't still in the band, but it was just kind of a way for me to get my ideas out on paper since I couldn't actually get with a drummer and a guitarist to jam together. I was still in Mixcraft, laying down drum samples, laying down bass lines, and then I would record guitar and vocals myself and just kind of put together these little ideas and demos. Eventually, some of the local bands like got wind of that and they liked my mixes, so I basically told them how to record themselves at home. They recorded through like a Scarlet interface, sent me their stems, and then I would kind of work on those and mix them. So that's how I got my first couple clients. And honestly, it was like a client every other month or a client every three months or something crazy like that. I mean, my first year of doing any paid audio work, I maybe made like $700 all year, which was fine to me because it was extra money at the time and it was fun. I was just trying to learn and grow. Now we're into probably like the end of 2013, uh, which was my freshman year of college. My wife and I moved down here. I'm doing, you know, a song every couple months for a band in Pensacola. Um, I'm starting to get more clients online through like the Chango group just from posting that. Once you get one or two solid portfolio pieces, it really starts to snowball. I would post a song and then people would come in and see it. I would post a song, people would come in and see it. So on and so on and so on. It got to the point to where I was doing right around like one song a month. This was probably in like 20, early 2014. I was doing like one song a month, which was nice. I mean, it was an extra, you know, 300, 200, 300 bucks every month. So I couldn't complain. Uh, definitely did not have any foreseeable future as like a full-time engineer at, at this point. 
Okay, so just to recap at this point, we've been through my high school days where I recorded my band, uh, then I recorded a couple other people for free, and then moved away, and people were paying me to send me stems and mix them and master them. Uh, one song every couple months. Then it got to like one song a month, and all of these clients were through online. Never recorded any of them in person. Now let's flash forward uh, to end of 2014. So at this point, I'd been working only in metal, um, and honestly, I was getting a little burnt out of it. I really, really, really wanted to do pop. So I had no idea where to even start. You know, there were no pop connections that I ever had. I thought it was super, super hard to be like an underground pop producer. So I was like, screw it. I'll honestly like make my own project. I'll record that and that'll be a portfolio piece. And then I was working at Barnes & Noble at the time. I met my best friend Grayson. Uh, he was working there one night. I was training him his first night. He was kind of telling me that he was interested in doing music. He played guitar. He had this little like demo that he had recorded in his room. So I was like, okay, well like come over, we'll order pizza, you know, we'll hang out, we'll record a song. If it turns out good, you can release it. If it doesn't turn out good, do whatever you want with it. I don't really care. So I invited him over, we recorded his first song, Teenagers, so if you want to hear basically like my first real pop production, either go listen to my song, Focus, or his song, Teenagers, and that's kind of like the first actual pop release we had. So both of those released in early 2015, and those were my first two like actual pop pieces that I had under my belt. So I started to use those as leverage. I would post those in uh, the same forums that I was getting metal people from. And honestly, nobody really cared because they were people that were only interested in metal music, which I completely understand. But uh, I decided, I was like, there's not really a community for pop music, like there is all these metal communities. There's not really a place to meet artists or songwriters or even learn pop stuff. At this point, I was just trying to learn about pop production and it was so overwhelming because you hear top 40 stuff and that's what you want to reference. And that is just insanely, insanely complex sometimes. Um, so I was like, you know what, maybe I'll just make like a, a small little group of some people that I know that also work in like pop or electronic music and maybe we can just kind of go back and forth. So I created the Make Pop Music group. Uh, at, that at that time it was just called Pop Songwriters and Producers, I think. So I made this group just for everybody to try to like connect and for me to see like where did people get pop clients from, you know, how do you record a pop vocal, how do you record this, how do you do that, how do you do that. So we all were trying to like learn together. It was, it was really basic stuff. And this all happened in probably like the middle of 2015. And so I made this pop group just to try to learn, to try to grow. Uh, more people kept coming in and more people kept coming in and more people kept coming in. And when people were coming in, artists were also coming in. And since I was running the group and I was kind of always posting, you know, clips of stuff I was working on, always posting little teasers, always asking questions. I started to notice that I was getting more and more clients from the group because I was being so active. So they, you know, would message me. I got a couple pop acts under my belt. And then I would say going into 2016, I set the New Year's resolution that I wanted to be full time at some point in 2016. Uh, flash forward to April 20th is when I decided that was the last day uh, I worked any other job before I went full time. And honestly, at that point, I was only probably doing maybe like 800 bucks a month in clients. And I made, I needed to make at least like 14 or 1500 because I was working at Barnes and Noble, but I was also a full-time college student as well. And you know, I had scholarships that paid for a lot of my stuff, but I just needed to make at least, you know, the 14, 1500 dollars to kind of compensate for not being at Barnes and Noble. So uh, I kind of came up with this game plan. I call it my full-time formula where I talked about, uh, you know, I discussed where am I gonna find clients? Uh, what am I gonna do if clients don't come in? How am I gonna make extra money? And then I kind of talked about, you know, how many projects do I need to do a month? At what rate? How long are those gonna projects, are those projects gonna take me? Am I gonna be working 70 hours a week and making less money than I was gonna be making at Barnes? I had to sit down and draw all this out on paper and kind of come up with it. And I kind of put together this full-time formula. I'll link it in the description below. But you can kind of use that full-time formula just to see this is how many clients I need. If I have this many clients, I need to charge this much money. If I have this many clients, I need to charge this much money. And I'll make a whole separate video of just like tips that I have for, you know, finding more clients. That's actually the next video that I'm about to record, like three tips of how to find more clients on the internet, which is where all of my clients right now come from. So in April, I decided this is what I need to do. This is my game plan. This is how I'm going to do it. I already had probably 13, 14 clients that I was recording for money, not a month, but just kind of like returning in alternative months. And I was making like $800. 
I just needed to double that, and I figured that not working the 30 hours a week at Barnes, 35 hours a week at Barnes, would allow me to promote myself, to work a little bit more, uh, you know, make sample packs for passive income because everybody likes my drum sounds. So these are just kind of ideas that I had, and honestly, that first month, it grew so exponentially, I was surprised. I went from making $800 the month that I was part-time to $3,800 my first month full-time because you don't really understand how easy it is uh, to find clients when you have all day every day to promote and to work and to you know do passive stuff make sample packs make tutorials make presets once you have all of this time to do all of these things the clients are out there the money is out there it's just really hard to convince yourself to take that jump I would say though that if you don't have experience with getting paid if you don't have experience with clients and just how to get projects in and out try doing that part-time or even for free or anything like that at first just to get used to it and then once you've kind of got your bases you kind of know you know this is what I do when I have a client this is how it works then you can start thinking about going full-time because when I went full-time I definitely was expecting it to you know maybe make fourteen fifteen hundred dollars that month and like scrape by it was amazing honestly clients like that uh, I know a bunch of other people that have said the exact same thing it's just trusting yourself and making sure that everything that you did before that point was in place. Like you can't just expect to go full time and like shit happen and you just immediately start making six, seven grand a month. You kind of have to line up those cards before you even think about going full time. And then when you are able to go full time, you start to implement these strategies that you've been thinking about for the past year. So now it's January 2nd of 2018 today as I'm filming this video. Um, it's been about a year and eight months since I've been full time. And honestly, it's been amazing. I graduated college last May, uh, May of 2017. So 2018 will be the first year that I am officially full-time, no school, no other work, nothing, just all audio, all make pop music, all of that. So I guess we'll see how much I grow this year. My goal is honestly to just put a lot more time into the passive stuff, the make pop music stuff, the community, the samples, the presets, the courses, stuff like that for y'all. Cause I'm doing a lot of client work, but I kind of want to, do more educational work so I'm gonna be doing a lot more of this this year as well as client stuff but to be honest that just kind of drives home the point that try to find some sort of like multiple income streams you know if you can do audio work if you can do visual work if you can do you know websites if you have any other skills try to implement that into your workflow because you might have an artist that needs a logo so guess what I do both so I can have an artist come in and book a production and they come in and book a logo and then I just made several hundred extra bucks and didn't even have to find another client it's all just about kind of having these strategies and these effects in place. So that's just kind of my story of how I've come to this. Let's just recap really quick because it's, it's been a long one right now. I started in 2012 making crappy little demos in my bedroom and in my friends' rooms for my band. And then in 2013, I moved away and started making crappy little demos in my own apartment. And then in 2014, I got a little bit better. That's when I started getting kind of paying clients in that metal genre, that rock genre. Towards 2014, at the end, I decided that I wanted to make pop music. So what did I do? Invested a little time, got a couple portfolio pieces under my belt. And then in 2015, was able to kind of push those portfolio pieces and start getting a couple paid clients and pop here and there. Built the pop community. Now that's a, a good resource for all of you to go find clients and connections in. I know tons of people are getting a lot of work in there every single day. So don't think that just because I'm the creator of the group, I'm the only one that can kind of benefit from that. I made that so people like you watching this video have a place to go to to get clients just don't go on there don't spam don't you know offer some point of value you know put your name in people's mouths this is going to be a huge tip that i have in my next video so definitely come around for that one but we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more if you're wondering how to get more clients online wait for the next video and then honestly in 2016 i decided that i was able to do it so I just made the jump and honestly i took my you know two or three clients a month and i made it eight clients a month and then i made it 15 clients a month and now I'm doing you know 25 30 projects a month sometimes and it's great I love it business is awesome there's always more you know I'm pretty booked up on how many clients I'm taking right now but I'm trying to go to the next level you know go to a different price here start working with more labels start working with publishers start doing this kind of stuff this kind of stuff so never feel like just because you're booked out you're done you know if you find all your time is booked kind of visit that cost analysis and kind of see you know here's the time here's the service if I'm trying to make more money and my time's already used I have to charge more and that's just kind of how you you know will go about your rates as you go but hopefully this video was a little bit informational for you guys I know it was more just like a story time for me I mean honestly my tips are pretty simple it's just get a solid foundation of production 
don't make it a money grab, you know, just do it because you love it. Do it because you think you do good work. And honestly, you'll have clients come in and come in and come in. Once you have the guts and you kind of have that foundation to go full time, honestly, throw yourself all out there. Promote, collab, do all of these things that you can do to get your name in people's eyes and ears. And honestly, that's it. I would love to hear your full time stories though. So if you have any really, really good ones, or you have any tips of your own, definitely leave them in the comments below for me to see. And then for some of the other viewers to see, like I said, this story has been told a million different ways from a million different people. This is just kind of my way. So I hope it was helpful for you guys. If it was, awesome. I'm so glad. And if it wasn't, I'm super, super sorry I took up however much of your time. So that's gonna kind of wrap it up for today. Uh, I know it's been mostly my story. We will be coming at you with a bunch of extra like tips to running the business, getting the clients, how to market yourself online. Those will be coming, I promise. Uh, for those of you trying to go full-time in 2018, just work on those foundational steps and it'll happen. I promise it'll happen. It may take a little bit more time than you want or than you expect, but just do the right thing, do good work, meet good people and honestly it will happen over time that's gonna be it for today i will see you guys next time i love you so much make pop music family peace out hey.